So let's say that we started here with 0.1 molar of this and 0.1 molar of this, and let's say that we add Point oh three molar hydrochloric. So after we add the hydrochloric, how much acetate is there going to be? Point oh seven. And how much acetic acid? Point one oh three. Oh, point one three. That's the one that people tend to forget. People remember that this is going to use up some of the acetate, but they tend to forget that it's going to produce more acetic acid. Well, the safest thing is to do what you were mentioning a second ago and use the initial change end table. So we have the initial, the change, and the end. So we started here with 0 0.03, 0 0.1 molar, and 0.1 molar. And then what's going to be the change in the hydrochloric acid? Take your time. What should we write for the change row? Minus. You have to start by asking whether it's going to go up or down. So you're right, it's going to go down. By how much? Three. That's right. That's what you were assuming earlier when you gave your answers. How do we know that all of this is going to be used up? Isn't what you're really assuming here, you're assuming that this reaction is going to completion. This is the limiting reagent, and you're assuming it's going to go until we run out of this. How do you know that? Because this is a strong acid. That's really a good definition of a strong acid and a strong base. If your reaction has a strong acid or a strong base, the reaction goes to completion. On, um, and so it determines on the limiting reagent. On the other hand, if you have only weak acids and weak bases, the reaction goes to equilibrium. And that's when you have to use the Ka and the Kb. Uh, but here we don't need a Ka or a Kb because this reaction is going to completion. So what should be the change in the acetate? Negative Just from the table, we know every time we use up one bowl of this, we use up an equal amount of this. And what should be the change in the acetic acid? So now we've proven the answers that you gave earlier. But it's always best to actually use a start change end table to prove that because it's easy to make mistakes in your head. Again, the part that people tend to forget is that we're not only using up the base, but we're producing more acid. Let me look at what the pKa is of acetic acid. Working on that. Um, I have a question. Yeah. You said that making a buffer includes its conjugate base, but could you make a buffer, or would it be a buffer if it were acetic acid and something like a strong base, like um, sodium, sodium hydroxide? Yeah, that's a good question. Let me uh, go back to that in a sec. So uh, as a digression, you were asking, could you make a buffer with this? Uh, what was the buffer you were considering? Um, NaOH. And basically, the answer is no. It can only be made out of weak, a weak acid, and it's weak conjugate. You can't do it with something strong. And you can see what would happen here. What would happen if you react the sodium hydroxide um, with this? Well, the <coughs> sodium hydroxide will react to completion. So there's not going to be any sodium hydroxide left. But in like well, uh, maybe, maybe what you're saying is that you can use this to make some of the, the weak conjugate. So yeah, maybe that would work. So if we, um, I guess this would only work if you put in less sodium hydroxide than acetic acid. Okay. So if you put in less sodium hydroxide than acetic acid, you're kind, of, um, you're kind of seeing that from what we went through here. So if you started with 
0.1 mole of this and 0.105 molar of this, and they reacted with each other, then you would be left with 0.05 molar of the acetic acid, and you would be producing Five molar of the acetate. And water? Yep, and water. Was there was water anyway. Oh. Yeah, so when these react with each other, what you produce is acetate and water. Well, the water doesn't change much because we already have a water solvent anyway. Uh, but yeah, so you're actually right. This is the way that you can, uh, that you can generate some of the weak base that you need. So ultimately, we still need the weak acid and its weak conjugate. This is just a way of generating those. This is actually a good point when you're solving problems. That, that was a good question. Um, this shows you, so this is a situation when you would end up using the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation to figure out the ultimate pH. So when you need the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation to find the, the ultimate pH, you need that when you end up with a mix of both um, the weak acid and the weak base. That's when you have a buffer solution. All right, now going back to here, what was the original pH when we had 0.1 molar of this and 0.1 molar of this? How would you find the original pH in this situation? Or what was the original pH? I should have said this is the Ka. So how would we find the original pH? If there were just acetic acid. Yeah, just acetic acid and acetate, 0.1 molar of each. Would you use the ice to... Start with 0.1 molar of this and 0.1 molar of this. Let's forget about the hydrochloric for a second. If we just have 0.1 molar of acetic acid and 0.1 molar of acetate, here's the Ka, how would we find the oh, pH? Okay. Um, the Ka is equal to Let's see. I'm not sure if I followed that, so I'm not sure if that's right or wrong. Um, so it turns out there's a, a simpler method. This is when we use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, right? Oh, okay. This is the situation we were just talking about. This is when we use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation when we have a situation with both the acid and the weak base. So what would the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation tell us about this? Um, that the pH is equal to the pKa. To the pKa, that's right. Um, so let's go ahead and calculate that. Let's figure out what the pKa would be here. How would you figure out that pKa? That was the initial pKa here. Now, it sounded like the method you were considering using was using a start change end table, perhaps, and an equilibrium constant. And that's fine. Um, in, in some ways, maybe that's better. You certainly could do that. However, we know that when we have a buffer situation, we have a shortcut, which is that we can use the henderson hasselbalch equation. So your, your instinct was good. Normally, when we're doing acid-base problems, we do use a start change end table. And we still could use a start change end table here. However, the henderson hasselbalch equation is a nice shortcut that we can use instead. All right, now we've added 0.03 molar hydrochloric to the situation, and we know that we ended up with this. So how can we figure out what the pH would be after we add 0.03 molar of the hydrochloric to the buffer? I'm sorry, what's the question again? We know what the pH was before we added the hydrochloric acid to the buffer. How can we now figure out what the pH will be after we add the 0.03 hydrochloric acid to the buffer? Oh, the concentrations in acid and conjugate base change, so you can put that in the equation again. Good. So, which equation? Um, the HH equation. So yeah, the henderson hasselbalch equation. Good. Yeah. So the key thing to recognize is that, again, we again have a situation where we have a mix of both the acid and the base. 
So you could use another start change end table. However, it's going to be a lot faster and less confusing to use our Henderson-Hasselbalch shortcut. So we can use the Henderson-Hasselbalch shortcut again. Let's work that out on paper. 